Do you question sport? I do. Don't worry, non-sports fans. I'm just clearing up the sports quiz stuff with this match of the day and sporting triangles last time out. And then we can get back to the exciting business of stuff hitting other stuff or jumping over stuff or collecting stuff or shooting stuff. That's what we want. TV shows with like guns and swords and stuff. Not middle-aged fellas in knitwear talking about horse racing, cricket test matches and FA Cup final goals. So what the hell is this question of sport thing about then? I'll give you one guess. All right, yeah, you got it. Well done. I mean, you might have seen it as it's still going now. And in fact, it celebrated its 50th anniversary last year. When I say that, it did have a pilot in 1968 presented by Stuart Hall from the previously covered It's a Knockout game. And, um, well, we probably shouldn't be talking about him at all. His most famous host, and the one featured in this game, was David Coleman, a man with... Give me a second to double check. All right, yep. Good. Yep, no sexual allegations against him at all. David, who had covered World Cups, Olympics, Wimbledon and all manner of golden jewels in the BBC Sporting Broadcasting lineup before they were taken away, presented Question of Sport from 1979 to 1997 and was then succeeded by Cliff Richard's only known sexual encounter, Sue Barker, whose own lengthy run ended just this year. A fairly simple quiz format, a question of sport, does what it says on the tin. Questions of sport. And it does it in multiple rounds, but get this. It doesn't ask Clive down the flat roof pub who scored the winner in the 1972 FA Cup final. The show asks actual sports people. Some of them are even quite personable rather than the focused personality free driven drones you'd suspect. Wow. Elite acquired the licence in 1988 and set about porting the title to anything with a keyboard at all. Alright, okay, not a typewriter, you smartass. Save the smartassery for the questions later on. Versions came out on the Amiga, the Amstrad CPC, the Atari ST, the BBC Micro, MS-DOS, Commodore 64 and Electron in 1989, with a budget re-release coming two years later courtesy of Elite's Encore label. To long-term viewers of this channel, this game might seem a little familiar. If you've been around since episode 2 of this series, well, well done you. Are you vaguely normal? Even vaguely? But thanks. Um, but yeah, if you've been around that long, you may remember a game called Mike Reed's Pop Quiz itself, based on a BBC quiz show in the same era. Also released by Elite, um, what they've done is taken out the music questions from that game and wedged in a lot of sporty ones instead. There's a few alterations to some of the rounds, but the interface, graphics and overall gameplay remain very similar, albeit with a slightly altered colour palette. Mike Reed is swapped out for David Coleman and also they've added the two team captains who were present at this game's release. Ian Botham, a cricket legend with a questionable mullet, strong opinions and one of the worst gaffes in social media history <coughs> is one of the captains here with cuddly, and I mean cuddly, look at him, looks like a nice little bear, um, 34 cap England legend and current world rugby chairman Bill Beaumont attempting to steer his team to victory as opposed to that of Ian's. Poor old Bill's monochrome rendering here makes him look like he's suffering from a bad cleft palate. The poor love. You too have to pick a pair of avatars to represent your vast sports knowledge. And so I went for the famous sports people, uh, Fred Dynage and Roy Orbison. It's not really them, but it really looks like them. We're going to win this, guys. We've got this. Come on, boys. So just like the show, two teams of three attempt to out-clever dick the other team using smarts and trivial sports knowledge. At the beginning, as well as choosing your avatars from the gaggle of shite haircuts on offer, you get to select your specialist subject from a selection of ten strenuous activities that people do in exchange for money and adulation. 
Your selection comes into play in certain rounds where a home question gives you a single point, whereas an away will get you two. A home question is one about your specialist subject, whereas an away one is a risky punt, useful if you're chasing your opponent's score about sport in general. You randomly select little squares in the first round, the picture board, with each numbered block hiding behind it a question based on the itty bitty icon that you uncover. Mystery personality can't be done how it is on the TV show. On the show they show footage of the sports person doing weird stuff unrelated to their day to day activities while avoiding showing their face and then the guests and the captains have to guess who that is. Instead, you get David Coleman describing a sports person in that small, slow scrolling speech bubble. It does the job, I guess. Then you've got the previously described home and away round. There's no appearance by Alf in his ute, and unlike Neighbours, there's no Spectrum game based on the residents of Summer Bay. I'm sorry if I've got your hopes up by saying home and away. Similarly to the mystery sportsman round, your poor old ZX can't show the actual sports footage required for the what happened next round. Usually in show, the host will pause footage at a crucial moment and the teams would then have to guess what weird, wacky or extraordinary thing happens in the footage next. Here, it's like there's been a power cut to the VT machine as David's disembodied bonce powers through anyway and describes what happens as everyone tries to guess what happens as the quiz grimly continues on by candlelight. Finally there's the quick fire round exactly as it was on the Mike Reed game with this sort of pie chart time eroding with each question that passes with a wrong answer giving you a time penalty. Due to the quick timed nature, and you have to be bloody swift too, of the game, you can't be typing things in. So the game's solution to this answer inputting quandary that exists in all of these games is to just give you four multiple choice answers. Get it wrong and the computer will dither around a bit and then takes a huge guess and then probably gets a point if it gets it right. But it doesn't look overly confident to me. That makes two of us. In terms of longevity, as with all these Spectrum quiz adaptions, it's directly linked to how many questions there are. Here you actually are better served than most, with five loadable blocks of questions. What's my opinion? Well, it's limited by both the Spectrum's limitations and the show's concept itself, really, as a lot of these quiz games are. It does what it can to the best of its ability. The maximum, really, that question of sport can achieve is a mare and a shrug, and it does that. So, well done? Crash gave it a 48% in their issue 61. They put it to you that the lack of variety as a result of the repeating questions and easy to remember four choice answers impacted on the game's quality, as did the easiness of the questions in the first place. Your Sinclair thought it was slightly better than that in their issue 39. They said it accurately captures the concept, but lacks the spirit of the real thing. A nice treat for sports fans though, a 7 out of 10 from them. Sinclair user waited for the Encore budget release to stick their oar in. It was in issue 102 when they got round to reviewing it, and they said it was a good value if slightly old re-release sports quiz and they gave it a 74% fair enough there we go then that's my sport bit done for the summer sorry olympics i'm all spent throughout the euros however that said there are still athletics ahead in the next episode but it's not from humans but from nude reptiles that walk around with ninja weapons it's the turtles in it like subscribe and k thanks bye